uh, continuing with Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Praise the Lord. So, I don't know who would want to read for us. Remember the Matthew chapter 23. I said this is the time, the Lord, that was on a Wednesday before the crucifixion. That was the Wednesday before he was crucified. So the Lord was now going for the crucifixion. This is the time where he bought uh, the price for us. He bought us by his precious blood. So we are now in chapter 24. We want to see this is the Mount of Olives. This is one of the most talked about. It's a very significant teaching which he taught there. So I'll ask Sister Sonia, can you read from verse 1 to verse 7? That Dalusi, can you read from verse 8 to verse 16? Uh, my daughter Fina, can you read from verse 16? 17 to 24. Then Sister Jackie, can you read from 25 to, to 34? Then Mama D, can you read from 34, from 35, sorry, to 44? or 42 or 44. Then, now 43. Then, Sister Audio, you read from 44 to 51. Praise the Lord. Let us read. Then we'll start going back again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister, my daughter. Okay. I'm starting. Okay. Where am I going to stop, sir? Sorry, I was trying to come in with my You are going to stop at 7. Okay, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Two, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, They shall not be left here, one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the mount of olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Five, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many six. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet seven for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places amen amen and all this are the beginning of sorrows then shall they deliver you up to be to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. 12, and because, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 13, that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. 15, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, Whosoever read it, let him understand. 16. 
Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Amen. Amen. Sister Jackie, right? Ah, my daughter, Sister Fina. Hello. Yes, Matthew chapter 24, you are proceeding from verse 18. Okay, verse 18. To 24, yes. 24, okay, yeah. verse 18. Let no one in the field go back to, to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress, equaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one will survive for the sake of the elect, elect days will be shortened. Verse 23. At that time, if anyone says to you, look here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. 24. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even to the elect. Amen. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the, in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is <clears throat> in a secret chamber, believe it not. 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even yeah, unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For whosoever is carcass is, there will be the eagle that gathereth together. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun, sun be darkened and the, and the moon shall give their light. Yes. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the power of the heaven shall be shaken. Verse 13. And then shall appear the, the sign of the sun. It is well. Yeah, proceed. Yes. Praise the Lord. Sorry about that. I'll read from verse 28. For death, for, okay, no, verse 29, sorry. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the power of the heaven shall be shaken. Verse 30. And then, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of, the, of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the he of heaven to the other. Verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branches is yet tender and put her forth leaves, he knows that summer is night. Amen. Amen. Verse 33, I read in Jesus' name. So you also, when you see all these things, know that know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till these things taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will, will by no means pass away. But of that day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but only my father. But as the days of, of Noah were so also, so also will be coming to the son of man be. For as in the days before the floods, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving and marrying until the day that Noah entered the ark. 
and did not know until the floods came and took them all away. So also will be coming of the Son of Man be. Then the two will be in the field. One will be taken and another left. Two women will be grinding the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your God is coming. But know this, that it is that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have washed and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 45. Who, who then is a faithful and a wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household? to give them meat in due season. Blessed is, the, is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayed his coming, and shall begun, begin to smite, to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The law of that servant shall come in a day when it look not for him, and in an hour that it look that it that he is not aware of. Verse 51. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. You are muted, sir. Praise the Lord. Sister Jacqueline Amayeshi, can you please read for me First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Sister Jacqueline. Okay, praise the Lord. I'll read if you're not it says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so came as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then certain destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That, that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Praise the Lord. So why did I have to read this thing? I'm just trying us to, to see if there are any misconceptions with regards to chapter, Matthew chapter 24. When you read these things, you say, this thing, you said, I'm going to come as a thief. So when you see already there were warnings again. So what we do know about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is the assigned. So I want to ask what signs, what signs are we seeing? What signs did the Lord say we are going to get when we can somebody just three signs? Because I've got a lot of questions to be asking now. Sister Odion, praise the Lord. Any, any one sign that you, you have taken from Matthew chapter 24? Um, yes, sir. False, false teaching. False okay. teaching. And uh, abomination that are taking place. Mm-hmm. Um, the, and the iniquity that is that is becoming the order of the day. Okay. Uh, Sister Jackie, what does she mean by iniquity? She's saying iniquity shall be abound. What do we mean by iniquity? 
Um, iniquity means sin. Okay, sin shall be abound. What do you mean sin? There are sins that I commit in the heart that no man sees. What do you say about? Is it, are these things that we see with our own eyes or things that we just trust that the Bible said they will happen? Sister Sins Sonia. No, I just, it's something that I'm just throwing to all of us. It's not one person should ask. Amen, amen. I think uh, uh, the one Jesus is talking about when he said iniquity is lawlessness. Like people living lawlessly, which is abounding already. So if I drive my car where they are supposed to say 50 kilometers per hour, and I drive with 60, is that lawlessness that the Bible is talking about? Sister Lucy, Dada Lucy. Um, the, the sin that Jesus is talking about right now is uh, fornication, adultery. Also, if you drive, if it's 50 and you drive 60, you're breaking the law anyway. Because you, you can, if they get you pay, you, you have consequences. So it's also mm -hmm. sin. So my driving can also disqualify me from going to heaven. Yes, because you've disobeyed. It's a disobedient. Okay. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I go to my boss, I'm driving, maybe I slept, I overslept. I just go in 35 minutes later. You know, there was a lot of traffic. I saw, is it a lie or I'm just giving because my boss will shout at me. I don't want to spoil my day. What should I do with this boss? Because if I tell him, ah, you will step, you overslept again, he will insult you and you cannot wake. What should I do? You ask for forgiveness. You say, excuse me, sir, I'm, or madam, I'm late. I'm sorry I'm late. You excuse yourself, so it's up to him to forgive you or to punish you. Okay, Sister Jacqueline, can you can you talk? Okay, it is well. I'll go to the next question. I want us to read first, uh, Second Peter chapter three verse 10 and 12. Praise Master Jesus. Second Peter, Sister Odin, can you read for us please? Second Peter chapter three, verse 10 to 12. Chapter 3. Yeah, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. 12, I read in Jesus' name. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In, in thee wish the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall meet with fervent it. The edge also and the work that are daring shall be torn, shall be burned up. See then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holiness, in all holy conversation and godliness? 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the Lord, unto the coming of the day of, of God, we are in the heaven being of fire shall be dissolved and the element shall meet with poverty. Amen. Amen. So what does this passage teach us in, um, about the signs to warn for the Lord's coming? I want somebody else. I don't want, I, I, we're, we're not like doing, when I ask a question, I want everybody to participate. That's how we learn. So when I ask if Sister Odin answers, I don't want it to like, it's not something personal. We just want to say, I can go to Sister Sonia, Sister Sonia. What does she mean when she's saying like this? So that we learn from there, then we can give a biblical answer. So what does this passage teach us about the signs 
or to warn us about the signs for the coming of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor David, are you in? Pastor David? Okay, praise the Lord. My daughter, Sister Fina, what does this passage teach us about the signs of the coming of the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can somebody talk to me? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can somebody talk to me? Dada Lucy. Hallelujah. What does this passage teach us? It's yes. saying about the same thing. These are the same thing. I want us to show that the Bible is supporting itself. Mm -hmm. It was not only Matthew, the text collector, who wrote this thing. It was also said by Apostle Peter. It was written by Apostle Paul. They are all saying the same thing, that the day of the Lord is coming. This world, there is something that he said, Apostle Peter, very significant. Be ye holy in all men of our, in our conversation. Mm. People are using more vulgar language. We are talking about the people in the church today, ways of those that are in holiness. They are swearing, they are doing things that are not even heard in apostate churches. They are the chief culprits, chief miscreants of all this nonsense that is happening, this theater in this end time. Instead of preparing for people for the coming of the Lord, people are busy jostling for attention. We want to be seen. I think I went to school. I also can preach. Yes, it's not about preaching. If an madman can take a microphone and start talking, it is the anointing of God that we need to do certain things that God has told us to do. So what does this pas passage teach us about to warn the signs of coming of the Lord? If you don't even answer, I'll leave it to you. Then I'll just go to, I'll ask another question. Until you get an answer, you will come back to me. That's how, that's how you should supposed to do homework. I, I, I said, I want you to be writing notes. It's very important you write and remember so that tomorrow no man is, he said false teachers are going to rise. So if you don't have the Bible, then how are you going to know whether it's the truth or not? Good. Let us see Matthew, John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Matthew looked at this, for the hour is coming. Indeed, which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. They that have done evil unto the resurrection of them nation. Oh, praise the Lord. So we are seeing something here. What does this passage teach us about this? There are people who take um, millennialism, says the resurrection of the righteous and the resurrection will be separated by the 1,000 years. But what does this passage teach us? Our teaching is not about the 1,000 years. The 1,000 1, years happens after the glorious rapture of the church. Rapture and second coming are two different things. Rapture is not going to come here. We are the body. The Lord is the head, so he cannot come here. He does not have the body. So what he's going to do is going to meet his body in the air, take it with him to heaven. After seven years, that's when he's going to come. And he's going to, this matter that we are reading, this is where he's going to step. He is going to put his feet on Mount of Olives. That's where the Lord is coming back again. From that time when he comes, that will be, we'll start from there. It's 1,000 years. People will learn to love God again as God wanted during the dawn of creation, when God created man, 
Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2. So this is the time. But what does John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29 teach us about this resurrection of the wicked, of the righteous? Praise the Lord. If you don't, I'll go to another question. I'll read another Bible text. I have teached, I have taught several subjects. I'm a little bit disappointed. Sir, please, what was the question, sir? The question is, what does John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29 teach us about? Okay, amen. Yes, just like you talked about the new millennial reign and any other thing, the, the Bible makes us to understand, I think it's even the book of Matthew, make us understand that the righteous, the, the ungodly will not stand in judgment. They don't even have a place there. So they already know their place. So they that have done good, it's, it's quite explanatory, self-explanatory. They that have done good will rise to the, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, that is internal life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, they will be condemned to internal death. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I uh, contribute just to add on that? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, uh, this means that uh, we will be judged not by our profession of, of faith in Christ, but by the life we have lived. So this is telling us to be aware on how we live. If we see also where that question you have asked in Matthew, uh, Matthew 24, where it say where we have, where you have asked about the holy how we should stay with we should have the holy conversation and we we have to be you know, how, we live, how we talk because Jesus is coming to destroy the whole world so those if we are not careful we are going to perish also as Christians. Amen. Can somebody go to the book of Acts? Book of Acts. While I read Mark chapter one verse, uh, Mark chapter nine verse one, I want somebody to go to Mark. I've put the, the verses on the chat. Mark chapter nine verse one. It says, "And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power." Can somebody read? Acts chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. Another person, Acts chapter 2, 1 to 5. Another, Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 36. Amen. Acts chapter 1, from verse 3, I read in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. They to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promises of the Father. Said he, ye heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore we are come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put in his own power. Verse 8, the last. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall, shall be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost path of the earth. Amen. Next chapter 2, 1, verse 5. Amen. One to five. Okay. I read in Jesus' name. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, the men out of every nation under heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. What? What can we learn from this? Smash my life. What can we learn from those passages from about the beginning of the kingdom of the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 3, uh, from verse, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 3 to Jesus was introducing the Holy Spirit as he was preparing to go. And he was in there, he was introducing the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit was coming to do to the church. And that was the beginning of the church. Okay. Praise the Lord. Another person, what do we learn about the coming of the kingdom of God? Just a small digression. This is what Simon the Peter, that was quoted in Simon the Sorcerer in Acts chapter 8 from 9 to 24. Simon the Sorcerer, he is the one, he, has, he claimed that he is God. He claimed that Moses is the one who gave Moses the law. So he claimed now he descended in a flame of fire and rested upon the, upon the disciples, upon the apostles then. And this is the man, that's why people feared him. He had made a lot of claims that were not verified. So it was when he was subdued by the power of the Holy Spirit. But then he quickly left and went to Rome to establish this, what is now known as Roman Catholic. It's like a world church. This is how he just came on to do these things. Apostle Peter, like I have taught before, had nothing to do with this Catholic. Apostle Peter was nowhere near in Rome. Only Luke, the doctor, who wrote the book of Acts, was with Apostle Paul in Rome. He never mentioned Peter at any time. And scripture does not support it because Peter was only asked to go to the Jews. Apostle Paul was the one who was commissioned to go to the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. The Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, it's just a digression so that you know some of those things. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and is translated us into the kingdom of his dear, dear son? What can we learn about this thing? What do we learn about this verse? Can somebody tell me what they understand? Church of God, were we not in darkness? Or were you in light before? If you were in light, I was in darkness myself. Church of God, if I say I'm not disappointed, I'll be lying. Ah. Come again, sir. <laughs> the verse said we are we were translated from darkness into into the kingdom of his marvelous son. Are we coming from light or we're coming from darkness into his kingdom? We are coming from darkness. Darkness. from darkness. From darkness to light. What do we understand? Because no we are being saved as sinners, right? Because we are coming to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the kingdom we're entering into. But there is a difference. You can, you can only be on the road to the kingdom, but not into the kingdom. So we need to be very careful about the road. Once you change the road, you change also the destination. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, I'll read. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. Amen. The service, this kind of service that we give God, oh, it's very shady. We treat God worse than our enemies. 
Can somebody tell me what does it mean? We see God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Do we see these things in our Christian in our Christian work? Sorry, sir. You're asking if we see the fear in our Christian dog. Yeah. No, no, not really. Why are we making this fear? Why have we become too familiar with the Lord? Yes, that was that you answered it already, sir. We lack the fear because we are too familiar with the Lord, with the word of God. We become too familiar, so no fear anymore. He has become like a guy next door. So ah, oh, I know Jesus now. I know him now. I know what he wants. People are treating him. Psalms chapter 50. He says, you did all these things and I kept quiet and they thought I was like you. We must be very careful. This Bible is a living word. When he stands in your presence like this, thank God some of this truth were ministered to me long, long ago. You stand upon the word. The judgment seat of Christ it's you because it's your conscience. Your spirit man is going to minister. You will, stand, you will stand and say what you did in flesh. Spirit, your spirit will be skeleton like this. He said, now depart from me. Mm-hmm. So we do not need to become too familiar. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I want us to understand something. Can somebody tell me which two offices would uh, the Messiah hold at the same time? Hmm? Can we read Zechariah chapter 6, verse 4 and 18? Zechariah chapter 6, verse 4 and 18. I want you to be writing notes. That's how you empower yourself. That's how you can go back and check the gospel truth. Something that is written always stuck in your memory. Zechariah what? Chapter 6, verse 12 and 18. 12 and 13, okay. I read in Jesus' name. And speak unto him, saying, Thou speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is in the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Praise the Lord. So what two offices are they talking about the Messiah would hold at the same time? There are two offices which you read there, which you can easily see. Can somebody tell me what they say? Let me read this one. Psalms 110 verses 1 to 4. I'll read. The Lord said unto my Lord, this one King David was saying, when the Lord Jesus Christ was saying, if David was talking now, why did he say, I saw my Lord saying this. This is the verse that the Lord Jesus Christ was saying when he was talking to the Pharisees. He said, remember, he said, King David said in spirit, he said, I said, my Lord, he was talking, my Lord said, come and sit here. This is the verse he was quoting. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and in the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning, thou hast the Jew of thy youth. The Lord that sworn and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, which was quoted in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6. When um, you remember when Apostle Paul was saying uh, the one um, Melchizedek was first mentioned in Genesis where uh, Father Abraham was coming from the defeat of kings when he went to rescue um, Lot, his nephew, from the, from those kings, the three kings that has conspired to overthrow the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah. So that is when you are said it was he had no beginning, he had no end. 
no mother, no son. That can only be a description of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he bowed down and worshiped even the father, the patriarch Abraham. So now the Bible, I'm asking this question. What two offices would the Messiah hold at the same time? Are we seeing two ways? Can somebody keep it to one? One of them I've already said it. You are a priest forever. He said, the Lord said, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, right? It's an office already, an office of the priest. Yes, sir. Remember, so, yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord, but he shall also be, until he said he shall rule, right? When you rule, how do you rule? What do you become when, a ruler, when you are a ruler? A king. Good. So these are the two offices. So Jesus Christ, so the king of kings, is our priest as well. Praise the Lord. I want to ask something. Is the Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom physical or spiritual? Praise the Lord. Is this kingdom, ah, thy kingdom come, I'm going to the kingdom. Spiritual. Is it physical? Is it spiritual? Yes. How do we know? John chapter 18, verse 36. Can you read it for us, please? Repeat again, sir. John chapter 18, verse 36. John 18. Verse 36. Amen. I read in Jesus' name. He said, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Amen. We remember when uh, something was significant was said, unto us a child is born. We remember that Bible verse, right? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Yes, sir. He said, I'll quickly read it so that we don't take much of our time. You know, teaching is always good when we interact like this. I don't want to rush it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So the Everlasting Father. So according to this verse that we have read, is this king earthly or spiritual? Heavenly. Which make it earthly, Abyss? No, <laughs> which make it spiritual. Praise the Lord, thank you. No, there are people who will be following us. That's why I, when I'm asking certain questions, I want those answers to be clear. Somebody, it could be a Muslim brother who's just been converted, he's coming in, he has no knowledge of these things. So we don't want people to pick, to touch at the top, miss, uh, not getting the whole thing while we are asking some of these questions. So I want, so from the Matthew chapter 24, where does the chapter mention of the period of 1,000 years of the reign of Christ on earth? Matthew chapter 24 that we read. Which Bible verse talks about it? Which verse talks about? We read 51 verses. Can somebody look through where the 1,000 verses, 1,000 years is mentioned? Yes, sir. Which Bible yes. passage? Yeah, which, which Bible passage? Yeah. We are Matthew chapter 24, from the oh. ones Where does the chapter mention a period of 1,000 years or a reign of Jesus Christ on earth?
people of God. Praise the Lord, sir. Uh, come again, sir. I'm sorry, sir. There is a time, there is a question. We read Matthew 24, the whole of it. Yes. Where does the chapter mention a uh, where the Lord is going to reign on earth? This period, the millennium period, the one period of 1,000 years, where the devil will be put into apsy for 1,000 years. Which Bible verse? And mm, I think it's 31. Uh -huh. Do we agree? Is it true what Sister Sonia is saying to us? Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, if if you start um, reading from 29, say immediately. Yes, after, after the tribulation of those days, mm. the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light. The stars shall fall from the heavens, and the powers. He said, "There's a vision." He said, "The heaven, the bodies will be shaken. The sun will withdraw its light. At that time, the Son of Man will come in great great glory." Mm. Every eye upon the earth, every eye is going to see you. Men will say, go to the mountain, say, mountain, can you kill me? Mm. The devil will be defeated by the brightness of his coming. He will bow down and be taken by one angel, put in the apsy. The devil is going to join all his other people later. But these antichrists, these ones, they will be thrown where they belong. By the grace of God. Where was the Lord Jesus Christ at the beginning of this chapter? And what did these disciples do to introduce this discussion? Verse 21. Verse 1, sorry. Where was Jesus at the beginning of this chapter? And what did these disciples do that introduced this, this discussion? Um, I think Jesus was at the temple, mm -hmm. and then his disciples were coming to. They came to admire. They, they were admiring the temple, and they were showing him the beauty of the the temple and yes, the beauties. Good. In verse three, I want somebody else. Like I said, we are learning. I want somebody else. In verse three. My daughter, can you come in, Sister Fina? In verse 3, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, what did the disciples ask? Where did this discussion continue? Because they asked something again. They asked something, that's when he started bringing out things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They asked they ask the Lord to tell them the, the signs, you know, the sign of these things and what shall be, what shall be the sign of, of his coming. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. That is correct. Very correct. It's very correct. That's how it's supposed to be. They were asking, they came to him privately, say, tell us when will these things be? We have seen prophets. I have seen there's one who call himself a bishop. He will sleep with one woman in the church. In full view of everybody. Another one is, is are these things happening? Brethren, the Lord predicted about these things. Apostasy, the falling away must come. Apostasy is just a Greek word. It's called apostasia. Apostasia, it means knowing the truth and then reject it. Because we've built each ears, he said there will come a time where they will not endure sound doctrine. <clears throat> so you will be answered according to Ezekiel chapter 14. God is going to answer you according to the desires of your, according to the idols in your heart. Because you want to get a car. You say good, but you are not going to ride a car to go to heaven. This is where we are missing it. We are teaching people to hate God. God never promised anybody to do, anybody any car. 
God did not promise you a, a job. God did not promise you to get a paper. God did not promise you to get a husband. God did not promise you to buy a house. So why are we telling people, say, ah, I can see my sister, I'm going to get married. It's, the issue is not about marriage. The issue about going to heaven. We, we misplace our priorities. We need to be careful when you talk about the Bible. Extremely careful. Why is it important for us to know why we are gathered? We are gathered to prepare for his glorious coming. He said, I'm coming like a thief. So if he's coming like a thief, is it not you? You are always holding your purse like this. Ah, this thief will come and steal from me. Wake out your salvation in fear and trembling. When the Lord says, hold on to that which we have, that the enemy will not steal from you, will not take away your crown from you. Brethren, the Bible is very simple, very clear. We may choose to distort, to suit our selfish agenda. But on that day, none is going to say, God, I did not know. Oh, yes, you can tell that to me. I tell people, the times that we have set that we are going to meet, believe me, God knows these times. These times are recognized in heaven. The angels of the Lord will come. You are coming late. You say, no, it is okay. I'm coming late. You can come late for all I care. But I'm just saying you are, you are being marked absent. Unless you, if you are just coming in from work, you are coming in, you join, it's understandable. I'm coming. I have slept at work. I finished at nine. I'm coming, to, coming from work. I am go, go straight to church. These are things that the Lord can understand you are working. But if you know, if you cannot value the times that you are meeting with God, you just come, say me, I don't care. I me, mean, you are not doing it for human. Because if you go to sleep and do not wake up, your own is finished. It means you are eternally condemned. You will meet an angry God on the other side. I did not know. All the truth that you are refusing to know now, you will know it on the other side. But it's only one way. There are many pastors that are busy, very busy judging others. This one is not a child of God. This one is like this. Mm, for what now? Busy to judge, not judging yourself. It is easy. None of us has made it yet. It's our wish. God can tell me you're going to make it. But if I commit a sin tomorrow, I'm canceled, I'm finished. Forget about it. Do not rejoice until you enter. Do not worry more about others before you yourself enter. So we need to know. 22. What would, verse 22, what would God do to help his elect in those days? Verse 20, 24, verse 22. Amen. He said the days, the days will be shortened for the sake of the elect. Who are these elect? Can somebody tell me? I don't want to just use grammar. Who are these elect? My wife is saying Christians are the elect. Is that true? Um, yes, sir. But um, I will say yes, but I believe, sir, can you hear me, please? Yes. Yes, I said it's it's quite true, but the elect, it's more of the chosen ones. Because the Bible says many are called and few are chosen. I think the elect is the, the chosen ones. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, sir. Yes, come in, please. Hmm. I, I want to ask a question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is this verse 22 that says, okay, let me read from verse um, 20. Mm -hmm. It says that, pray ye that your flight be not in the, in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, no, ever shall be. Then 22, it says, and I said, those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, 
those days shall be shortened. Okay. Uh, the days that are to be that are to be shortened, is it during the tribulation or yeah. before the rapture? Um we need we need to be careful about these things. Mm. Pre-tribulation and all these things. I need to be careful about pre-tribulation and post-tribulation. People are getting busy with certain things that will not make a difference to their Christianity. Whether it's post or pre, I'll leave it. I'll give you Bible verses that, will, that you would know whether it's pre or post. The Bible says, there's what they said, um, Israel is going to attack the nation of Iran. At that point, it's going to be forced to get into an agreement. There are going to be a false peace. That peace will run for three and a half years. During that peace, after three and a half years, they will break that peace. Peace trade. It is during that time that when they break it, the 1,260 days which are mentioned by the Bible. Some suggest, but I do not want to get into that debate where people are just saying it's post is pre. I just I want to read before I answer you. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast. But also, there are things, I think, is it in the book of Colossians, which we read, that whose names were written before the foundation of the world. Remember, there are people whose names were predestinated already, as the Bible says before the creation of the world. So when we say Christian, it's not true. We've got people who are claiming to be Christians, whom we know are living in sin. Yes, those that are walking in holiness and righteousness, yes, they will get into the kingdom. We have got the people who have been satanists, which the Lord is using now. They may have digressed, but the Lord called them back because their names could have been written before the creation of time. Someone could be a prostitute as we talk, or an armed robber. But the Lord will arrest them and come because by his foreknowledge and for wisdom, their names were written before the creation of the world. This gospel, not everybody is going to be saved. The only thing that we are doing is we are giving this gospel to everybody so that tomorrow when they stand before the Lord, they will be able to reject, say, ah, we rejected him, say yes. It's not everybody who is going to make it to heaven. Remember when Apostle Peter said, will there be few people who enter? said, very less, say, very few people are going to enter. At times they said, get at a ratio of one to a thousand. A thousand are going to hell, one is coming to heaven. So when we see the proportion, we know why it is like this. I've told you the five propensity um of the, the the that opens up the doors to the enemy last carries 50 percent anger carries 20 percent greed carries 20 percent then um maintain for well the things that is 10 percent and then honor wealth and glory if then these are the things that opens the door but the biggest of them, the top three of them that a man can easily follow, that can bring you to the zero point are these three. Last, anger and greed. The moment you get in these three, you are one foot down on the path of destruction. So to answer this question, we said, yes, the elect. The elect could be people who come to the knowledge of Christ. Some, somebody could be a witch doctor as we talk. Somebody could be living a different life. There are people that we know who have been saved before death. Say so the Holy Spirit say, hey, repent and be saved. They just repent after three days yet they died because God wanted to save them. He knew by his foreknowledge. The danger for those that are in Christianity today is the longer we stay, the more mistakes or the more prone we are to the attacks of the evil one. So we need, we need to be extremely careful. So the days that are being shortened 
uh, for the elect that those he chose before the creation of the world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. We are, we are looking like you are not... Okay, let us go to the book of Ephesians. Let me read something. Just can refresh our memory. You know, at times this gospel, there are things that we do not quite understand. These are things that many do not want to talk about. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6, I read in Jesus' name. According as he, as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Christ Jesus himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted into the beloved. So we can see Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Before the world was created, he knew. Remember one verse said the Lord Jesus Christ was slain before the creation of the world. These are things that are in the Bible. So we need to understand one or two things. Why it's important to understand this gospel truth? Because we are not trashing it because I wanted you to know. That's why I'm asking you some, some of these questions so that you understand where, what does the Bible mean? What does it say? The elect are those people. Israel is not, Israel is chosen one, but not elect. It doesn't mean if you're a Jew, you're not going to hell. You will go to hell as a Jew. God is not a respecter of person. That's why Apostle Peter wrote those things. What is man that God is mindful of you? So don't fool yourself, say me. God has chosen me. Forget about this position that say, I'm leading a ministry. I'm a pastor. I've read people from the dead. Forgive about it. Forget about everything. So the Lord warned us about one danger. He warned us about one danger in verses 23 and 24. Can somebody tell us one danger? Praise the Lord. Amen. He warned us about um, false Christ that will come, just like we found one on Facebook or media the last time. Somebody was parading himself as Jesus Christ himself. There shall be false Christ. They will say he's there. And false prophets also shall arise. So he warned us about them, that we shouldn't believe in them. So what that it suggests when you know these things? He said something very significant. These things must happen first, right? But what does he tell us? That they are the sign of his coming. Yes, the Lord. That you know the near is the end is nine. But I have a question, sir. Sorry. I have a question, sir. Yes, sure, sure. Talking about the chosen ones, because in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, after the story of the five veg, uh, the ten virgins, and when five was chosen, then he now told us, he said we should watch therefore. For many are called and few are chosen. I believe it was in that place. So who are the chosen ones then? Apart from somebody that is choose to do something in these last days, in the last days after all set are done, who then will be the chosen ones? Come and speak for yourself. All Christians are the chosen ones. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she is saying all Christians are the chosen ones. I, I, I want you to be very careful. Many are called, but few are chosen. You say, who are the chosen ones? That is a question. These are the chosen. I want people, I want people to understand it. That's why I say, come and sit here and talk so that they hear you talking. Those who are living in holiness and righteousness are the chosen ones. They are not hearing. Are you hearing what she's saying? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I want you to be very careful. I don't want you to mischaracterize and give anybody a false hope that if you're a Christian and a chosen one, it's wrong. It's don't ever characterize it to give somebody a false hope that by claiming to be a Christian, you are going to heaven. It's very wrong. Praise it's God. Praise God. Yes. yes. Before you answer us all, because if you look to the, in the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter... 
is it chapter 12 where he was talking about the those who will there are those who will uh, let me let me check it before i say is it chapter 12 or chapter 3 daniel where Daniel was talking about those who will remain sanctified, those who will, for me, those who will accept to walk in the holiness and righteousness, those people who will walk in the real way that God wants them to walk, in the repenting life, repentant life. As uh, Daniel chapter 12, I think, let me go. The twelve. Yes, I think it's chapter twelve. Yeah, let's say from let, let, it's re, it's in yeah in chapter twelve. And many shall be purified, made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. So, who, which people are is Daniel speaking here? I think it's the same what we are now asking. What Sister Sonia was asking: Who are these the chosen ones? I think Daniel has spoken here. Who are these people? Right. God bless you, sir. You're muted. We can't hear you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Sorry. Amen. I said uh, I cannot agree more with you. Because mm. why we need to be careful. That's why I'm very careful. I will give you a very lengthy answer. So that no man will misquote you. Coming to church does not make you a Christian. Many have become true members of a church without having a personal relationship with the Lord. So I do not we do not want to mischaracterize and say, ah. Because you are claiming to be a Christian, you are one. No. It is when you start walking with the Lord. What happened during your conversion? Are you still doing those things? If you were converted drinking beer, are you still drinking beer? If you were converted still going and sleeping with women out there, if you are still doing it, you are not doing it. I will give you an example. Let me give you an example of a man that I, I heard about. About one man. This man... They invited one evangelist in one part of Nigeria. This man, when he started, came, he said, uh, Matthew chapter 3, I think chapter 8, where you must say, produce fruit according to, to um, what, is it fruit according to the fruit of repentance? He said, you must produce fruit according to your repentance. So he said, uh, what? So when this man, he just shouted, he said, ah, pastor, I said, wait, wait, wait. This was the visiting pastor. He said, Pastor, I want to say this man, this our pastor, is a thief. This man said, You are visiting, you are accusing somebody. He picked up the microphone and said, Can you give this brother a microphone? He said, I want you to apologize to your pastor. He, and you tell me why you call him a thief. He picked, he said, Pastor, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. But I want to repeat again, you are a thief. He started mentioning, say, this conference that you are seeing here, I single-handedly finance everything. The t-shirt, everything you are seeing here, I'm the one who put all this money. This pastor asked me to come and get baptized, but it was my money which got baptized. I was never baptized. I just went in there and came out the same. After baptism, I went to sleep with a woman in a hotel. He said, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. And he was crying. So this man had to make an altar call for him. He said, because if it is, if, because when you are being baptized, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 4 to, uh, 12 to 14, for one died that all to live, that the life that you live, the one that uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse uh, 20, that Christ lived, not you. So he said he did not die to himself. He's still living. The old man is still living. You must become a new creation. So this man, he said, I cannot continue to go and live in sin. I'm selling cocaine as we talk now. 
this pastor is taking my money and he's praying for me so that I sell more cocaine, kill people. I want to serve God, but I cannot stop it. I don't have the power. I want my, my pastor to lead me to Christ, but he's just interested in money. He is taking money. I even asked him to give you money. I don't know whether he's not put this money in his pocket. That's why I called this money a thief. So you see at times, there are people genuinely who want God. But the condition for God is the same one, the same one which he gave to Father Abraham, Genesis chapter 17. Be thou perfect. Say, walk before me and be thou perfect. God is God, it doesn't change. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 22. Walk diligently in all my ways. He said, if you live this diligently, it's all, no exception. God is holy from eternity past, eternity present, eternity in the future. Whatever you can, people are arguing over these things. Let you argue, but on that side, you're not going to argue. Because the angels of the Lord are recording this message. That's why when you are praying, say, God, let, let not this message speak against me. But I have got to make sure I'm telling you the truth. So that tomorrow when you stand before the, before the Lord, I will not stand accused. Because I'm telling you the truth, which the Lord himself can confirm. Not everybody saying, Lord, Lord is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Don't be fooled unless you live a holy life with repentance at the foundation of your, of your Christian life. Because without repentance, we sin every day. Right now, I have seen five naked women when I was just trying to, 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 go, to, to go on Facebook Live. How do we survive? I went to one company to buy something. I saw one picture of a naked woman on a calendar. How do we survive? We need to repent. We are being polluted left, right, and center. So without repentance it is, as our foundation, we are not going to make it. All the people that say our repentance is not necessary, oh, yes, it is. Romans chapter 6 from verse 16 to 22. When you read, the, um, I don't want to get into that teaching because I taught it before. Repentance brings obedience to the word. Obedience then makes you to live into the imputed righteousness of Christ. Then you start your work consecrating, setting yourself aside. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present yourself holy and acceptable. You cannot just come. God is holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 16. He said the same. Be ye holy, for I am holy. You cannot come before. The verse that we read, God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. He cannot come into his presence with sin. So we need to understand. I do not want to, Christians to, to think, ah, I am going to church. I, I bought television for, for the pastor. Forget about those things. God is not looking for a television. God is looking for the lost souls. He came to seek that which was lost. Buying it is an act of charity, which the Muslims, the Muslims are doing the same thing. Muslims are busy building bridges, busy building um, boroughs in Africa there. It's an act of charity. They can only attract a blessing from God to live well. They can get more healthy. These are the blessings that come with it. But the holiness, righteousness is the benchmark of entry into the kingdom of God. Don't be fooled to, don't be lied to. The Bible is very clear. The Bible is extremely clear. If you cannot walk the talk, then the message of holiness is going to choke you. If you, if you are not willing to change, he said, pick up your cross daily. The Bible is very clear. Give us our daily food. He did not say you eat today, he said after one month. You cannot save God in disgrace and come and want to inherit the kingdom of God. No. Unless you are willing to sacrifice, there's a price that needs to be paid. We need to pay the price as Christians. If you are a Christian who is not willing to pay the price, say God, no matter what. Muslims pray five times a day. Whether they were insulted, whether they were beaten, whether they were doing this thing, they put us to shame. They are worshipping a dead person, an idol. We are claiming that we love, we, we, we love the Holy God. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. They praise me with their mouth, which the Lord reminded them when I was speaking in Matthew chapter, 7, Matthew chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. When he says, Isaiah spoke about you. 
you praise me with your mouth, yet your hearts are very far away from me. You cannot talk about Jesus. Even the demons, they speak the name Jesus. So you cannot come and frighten people. Ah, Jesus said, Jesus is not about what you're saying. It's about when you start living the life. This is the consecration, setting yourself holy, setting yourself apart for use by the Lord only. If you're not ready for use, don't, don't be fooled by people who say, ah, come, Robo, bo, bo, I see this woman, ah, there's a sister in Italy, ah, Ancona, ah, sister Sunia, praise the Lord, man of God, forget about that nonsense. Forget about that nonsense. They're all coming from the occult. God, if God cannot come and tell you, take your filthiness away from your, from your life, otherwise you're not going to inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. This is the message every person is coming from hell with that message. Not this fake hell people are coming and be shedding crocodile tears. They say, God, you are putting on your trousers. Somebody is coming and say, I bent all my trousers. You are coming and say, they, they weave on. That is coming from the marine kingdom. Is the one that you're saying, I met God. Yes, Satan is the God of this world. The what? This is an advanced civilization. If you see it like this, if you take somebody from Africa now, they come in Europe like this, oh, it's like they're in heaven. If you we are living in Europe now, go down there and see this world, oh, yes, you'll be overwhelmed. You'll be overwhelmed. It's an advanced technology. It's a mystic. We cannot, there's nothing in this world that can compare to the technology of the evil one. So many people are overwhelmed because in, in spiritual in, in spiritual realm, it looks very real. You cannot distinguish unless God himself chooses to show you, to show you, say, this is fake. This is not my kingdom. So we need to be careful. Not everybody saying, Lord, Lord is a chosen one. Many are called, but few are chosen. The Bible is very clear. Just like an interview. If you don't come up and you want to be the best. You have got to come and want test. You know, you must test for this righteousness. You cannot come, you cannot be recognized as the best at work. When you come in the church, you say you are the worst. You laugh at somebody's cleaning a toilet in the church. Somebody is an usher. You say, ah, I cannot do this kind of thing. These are people with humility. That people God is looking at. I will tell you that just a digression. There's a young man who came with his very good, expensive Mercedes Benz. He saw one woman cleaning the church. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning the church. God wanted to teach this young man humility. He saw this woman cleaning, cleaning. He just, ah, God, 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 go to the church. He went to the church. He saw this woman cleaning. He took five euros. He said, hey, I want to give you five euros. So when you're going, say, hey, can I, can I go and drop you home? He, should, he did not know that he was talking to a medical doctor. I said, no, I've got my car. She looked at the woman because she was waking. She was dressing somehow. The man looked and said, okay. When he saw the car that she was getting into, that's when God said humility. She was cleaning in my church. I wanted to show you what humility is. This is a medical doctor who is cleaning the church. Something some of us cannot do. He said, I don't want to reduce myself. Then I ask you the question, why would God not bless this woman? If this woman is to drop dead now, why would God not choose her to come? Humbling yourself, not from pastor. She herself said, pastor, I will be cleaning the church. You are told just to lead a prayer. You start complaining. It is only in Christianity where people are disobedient. In the demonic world, they don't tolerate this nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. If Christians live, if Christians want to make it to heaven, then they need to live a disciplined life. There is no way that you can enter heaven as a half-baked Christian. You come, ah, today, Lord, I do not want to do this. You say you are tired, but you work 10 hours. Tomorrow you are going to work again. So it's about money. You can defend for all we can. But here, how I can stand before the Holy God. Say, when I put you in this position, I knew you were working right. You want to tell me a job that I gave you that I'm working in. Brethren, not many people who have gone to the other side get the opportunity to come back. Very few people came back to tell their story. 
It's only that the Lord wants us to know that many, it's one way in. Once you are in, it's finished. It's eternity has dawned upon you. Eternity is not one year. You'll go thousands. And the people who go in here for five minutes, say they will be crying. I don't want to be there. Imagine somebody that one month, two months, one year, five years, ten years, just imagine, in torment. And you joke about this thing. You say, God, I mean, I don't want to do this. You are playing with God. If you cannot save, you say, save him, reverence in fear. The Bible is very clear. When you say reverence, to come, there are people when they are praying, say, God, I don't want to put on my shoe. God, I don't want to put like this. And then you just come like this, putting your hand in the pocket. Oh, God said this. You put your hand before the Holy God. When you are talking to your boss, you will be putting hands like this, like a chicken which has poured some water. When you are preaching out there, you put your hand like this. Say me, I have done this. Forget about this nonsense. Only if we live a holy life, the path is narrow. The Lord repeated it. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. The Bible is very clear. There is no room for misunderstanding in the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 8, he said, will you do all those things and I'll let you inherit the place which I have given you to your future? your forefathers. He said, not only are these things happening, verse 12, when he says, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 12, said, they were not even ashamed, said, were they ashamed of their lawful uh, conduct? He said, no, not only were they doing sin, they were even encouraging others to do sin. Others to live in sin. Go and steal. Go and do this thing. Not only are you sinning, encouraging somebody to do sin. If you are buying something that you know is stolen, you are encouraging sin. You are not only participating in sin, you are encouraging them because they've got a customer. And you come and say, God, I want to repent. You cannot be repenting about things that you know. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, 27, sorry. 26 and 27. For if we go on willfully sinning after coming to the knowledge of truth, then there's no more sacrifice left for us. Only fearful judgment. The Bible is very clear. So do not be saying, Ah, uh, you are a Christian, my brother, you are going to heaven. Ah, uh, my brother is a Christian. That's what they tell you. You are known as a Christian and a sinner in heaven. Christian on earth, sinner in heaven. Of what use is your Christianity on earth? It is good people say, ah, uh, I know I'm going to heaven. No, nobody knows until you enter. Because it's not by your power, it's by his grace. That's why I say repent of all your sins. There are many sins that the devil is holding against you. Many sins. If you, if you don't repent, oh yes, you are not going anywhere. Until you go before the Holy God and humble yourself in His presence. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people were called by my name, come to me, say, turn away from their evil ways. The Bible is very clear. When you humble yourself in His presence, say, God, I'm a sinner. King David said, My sins are all before me like this. When he was confessing Psalm fifty-one. In iniquity, when I was born in my mother's womb, he acknowledged his sins before the living God. We are not anywhere closer to where the apostles were. We, are, we, we have got more uh, possibilities of preaching to different people, things that Apostle Paul never had. Then I ask you now, I can drive to go to another city five kilo, uh, 500 kilometers away, which Apostle Paul never had and still have an excuse. So can you tell me, if God is looking at the two of us now, who is a faithful servant? You have got television, you have got YouTube, you have got computer, you have got WhatsApp, you have got this. What excuse do you have? You use this opinion, you use this opportunity to come and give, uh, my brother, you are going to heaven once you accept Jesus. No. Many, I've seen many men of God, they go and lead. So my brother just to say, God, I'm a sinner. You're on a deathbed. You must genuinely lead the soul to genuine repentance if you want God to take them to heaven. People is not going to heaven. It's not going to hospital and say, ah, my brother received Christ. You must know what you are doing. You must know what you are doing. That is the soul truly giving their life to Christ. Not to say, oh God, they're repeating, talking on the mouth when the heart is no conviction. conviction. Until it is done with the conviction of the heart, 
with your spirit ministering to it, then the soul will be wasted. You will think, ah, they went to heaven. No. Heaven is not by chance. Neither is it by accident. Unless there is a qualification. So we need to tell people that we are ministering to. The journey is not easy, but he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Until you come to this truth, many have regarded me like I'm a radical. I said, I don't change. I don't change. I'm not regenerating myself. Truth will I tell. Truth I shall tell. Truth I will continue to tell. No matter it offends somebody, I'm not here to please anybody anyway. But somebody must know the truth. If you want to make heaven, then holiness is a condition. But there cannot be holiness without repentance. A sin that you spent two days doing, one year doing, you come and say to me and say, God, please, you know now, I'm human. You are human. Did you live on earth as a spirit? Do you think these women that you are seeing, naked women, did not approach the Lord Jesus Christ? Women are women. Don't forget, they also went to him. So, ah, I like this man, or I like this man. They didn't know God is here. He's my creation. What are you going to do? So we need to walk in holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and live a holy life. This is the first part. People say, follow peace with all men and live a holy life. The same thing that um, Apostle Paul repeated in Romans chapter 16 or 17, it may not be possible, but you must make an effort. Unless that is done, oh yes, you are not going anywhere. No matter how, it is easy to fool people, but remember Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 said, the heart is desperately wicked. I, the Lord, searches the heart and test the mind. I will pay every man according to what, to what he has done, whether good or bad. The same thing which was repeated in Romans chapter, uh, chapter 11, when he was talking about, uh, he was going to give every man according to what you have done. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. He is going to pay you according to what you have done. He who chooses to live in sin, continue to sin. If you, if you want to live in sin, sin full time. Don't sin small time, because you are going to burn. That's why he made, it, he made it clear. I would rather have you cold or hot. If you are a lukewarm Christian, you are the worst of them all. You cannot have one foot here, one foot there. No. That's why the Lord, I ask myself, God, why do you use satanists? Because they are very cold. It's easy to boil a cold water than boil a, a warm water. You see, I say, ah, let me use it. And these satanists, they turn out to be one of the most genuine ministers of God much more genuine, they've got more genuine convincing testimonies than people are claiming themselves to be ministers of God. Best, virtually nothing to show for it, except the name. Except to come and claim, you know, when I, was, when I went to Italy, this is the suit that I bought from Italy. This is telling yourself about, you are talking about yourself instead of talking about him. This is the nonsense that you see going to church now. Ah, Receive prosperity. What prosperity? Are we prospering the soul? These are the first prophets that were being talked in Matthew chapter 24. I'm dwelling on it so that we know there is the qualification for going to heaven. If you are deceived and say, oh, it's nothing wrong. Yes, we need money, but money is not our problem. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Gold is mine, silver is mine. What does the Bible say? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Forget about it. Every other thing belongs to the Lord. God is not poor. God can provide for everything that you want. Preach his truth. But if you go, you are being entertained. People are just laughing. Ah, I'm seeing this. You are being told a number blade of a car. Of what use is that to the kingdom of God? Ah, Sister Lucy, I see you were born uh, 20 May. Oh, yes, man of God. Don't you know the year on which we were born? Is that news that we are born on this day? People are busy clapping for nonsense in the church. I called it entertainment over 10 years ago. There is no way that you can come and clap here. Ah, so, so what? That is the number of my car. I'm the one who registered it. 
If you cannot come and tell me my secret since all years, forget about it. This is what is happening in the church because people have put each ears. So not every Christian is saying, ah, Jesus is good. Jesus with the mouth, not Jesus with the heart. Jesus is looking for those who are calling Jesus from the heart. God did not bless me with the ministry of the way to come and insult another man of God. No. He has called us to edify, to prepare his sheep for his glorious coming. We are not called to come and say, this one doesn't know, this one knows, or this one speaks grammar. The devil does not understand grammar. He understands fire, violence. Oh, so, oh, grammar. Which grammar did you hear Jesus Christ speaking? Is there any grammar in holiness? Which grammar are we talking about? We come and, oh, you know, I first put on my credentials. Now people are admiring this man, you know, he has got two degrees, he has got this. For what now? Of what use is that to the kingdom of God? If you go to sleep and do not wake up, of what use of those pieces of paper? Are you going to go, to go and tell God, God, I'm an engineer? He said, who needs those things there? What did you want to engineer in heaven anyway? Holiness is the condition. If you want to enter heaven, follow peace with all men. Not peace, he said, ah, you know, I cannot do this. I hate this one. Mm. Collect one sister, butcher them for mouth. Mm -hmm. Talking here, talking here. It's not going to help you. If you perish in that state, you're perishing for nothing. I want to go to heaven. If in the demons they want to go to heaven, they only do not want to meet the Lord there. So when you, we must be careful with our holiness. It must not be talk, empty talk. Only talk is too little, it's too vanity. If you want to make heaven, you've got to take practical steps of saying, God, I'm a sinner. God, help me. Not to come and claiming, you know, I want to, I, I, I'm going, I know I'm going to heaven. Nobody was promised, Apostle Paul said, let me not be a castaway. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Moses almost missed it. Joshua. We are talking about people who are very close to God. And there we are, we are busy. You know, my sister, you know where I'm going now, I'm going to heaven. You can fool yourself. Live in a fool's paradise. That's where the devil has taken you to. That's where he took Adam and Eve to. They he did not tell them the other side. Say, oh, behind this opening your eyes, there is a lot of shame. There is a lot of sorrow. These things that we are glorifying on this earth, there is a lot of sorrow, believe me. A lot of sorrow. We need to be careful. Don't be told that you are going to heaven. There is a brother who called me some time. He said, I, I went to the Lord and asked, where is Pastor Jeff? He said, he's my child. He, his name is written in the book of life. I said, oh, oh, forget that nonsense. Oh, hold it, right, hold it, right, hold it, hold it. I don't want that nonsense. I do not want that to, so that I can lower my guard. Because they say my name is there. I did not see my name. I'm working like everybody else. He said, you know, one thing about Christians, it's very sad. All of us here, those that have went to work or those that have been working for years, when you get a job on the second of the month to the 31st, nobody gives you a salary until you work. It is only in Christianity say, God, will you first give me this thing? It is only in Christianity this nonsense is happening. God, I want my salary first. But when you're working for Caesar, Caesar works, uses you for 30, 30, 30 days until he gets your your salary. At times, it does not give you the whole money. Just look at how Caesar uses you. And when it comes to God, say, God, you must give me a car if I want to save you. But Caesar is using you for nothing, for 30 days before he can pay you. Why must it be different with God? So if you want to go to heaven, oh, yes, your mentality has got to change. You've got to renew everything about yourself. And the way you see him, if you can treat God worse than your enemies, that when you are talking to your boss, your, 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 your head will be like this, like you are talking to God. A mere mortal, a mere mortal whose brain can just, can just collapse and perish in that minute. That's the one that you fear. What about him, the Holy God? Brethren, there is work to be done. If we want to make heaven, false teachers, because we are talking about false teachers, people were telling us the gospel we want to hear. This message is not about pleasing people. This message is about telling people what they do not want to hear. People were killed for this gospel. Why would you be clapping hands? Clapping hands for what? I'm not a storyteller. 
Why would I, why would we be clapping hands? I have asked this question. When did you read in the Bible that Jesus Christ was laughing? What will he be laughing at anyway? The Lord was laughing, laughing away. Jesus Christ is not a comedian. He came to pay the ultimate sacrifice for humans. He regrets having created us because we are hard hearted. We are not even willing to repent. Repentance is the first stage. Say, God, we are a sinner. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we are, we are condemned already. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall be saved. But if you don't have the son, you are condemned already. You stand on condemnation the moment you die. You don't even need to go. You have brought hell at your feet. So the issue here is not pleasing people. The issue is here making it. Going to heaven as a team. But we need to tell people the gospel truth. We are not here to be politically correct. I would rather be biblically correct. I have said it times without number. The message here is not to make friendship. Whoever is following this message, if you are in a church where they are promising you money, promising you the seat, promising you that thing, oh yes, it's a, they are not different from a Satanist church. It's about your soul. How much will you keep? How much did we pay for the Lord Jesus Christ to come here? How much? His creation butchered him. His own creation. That he will pay the ultimate sacrifice. When you are given one day to sleep, you go complain. Yet it nails like this. Those people were cruel. The Roman Empire. They were very cruel. When you see what he did at that cross, oh yes. You would think twice, say, God, am I living in a way, in a way that pleases you? Yes, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by his spirit. When your spirit ministers, when you say, God, break my spirit, or well, yes, you can start to live your holy life. Not the one, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, not your filthy rags, which you call righteousness. The Bible says filthy rags. That's what it is. It's dirty. Where did you get the soap? Uh, the Lord found me. Who found each other? I hear people say, before the Lord found me, before I found the Lord. He, he, found, because he had to find, we are the dead people. He came to a, world, to a dying world. So it is the living, the living God who finds us and brings us into his life now. Now we are living, we have got an obligation. What obligation do we have? That we have come to the knowledge of truth. When people ask you, why are some chosen? Why are some not? That question, yes, thank God we don't have a God that we're going to ask questions. That time, oh yes, a screen, you just say, screen. Hear my son speaking. We don't have a God that we question. That question will come, say, God is not a Democrat. If you want to make heaven, oh yes, you have got to go back to the first love. On that note, I say, God bless us all. Let him give us the grace. For by strength shall no man prevail. We pray for the Holy Spirit to break us. We pray that God is going to help us to pick up our crosses daily, to die daily to ourselves. Not to be chasing people away from faith because of the way that we live our lives. We need to change as Christians. We need to cry out unto the Lord. Say, God, change us. God, make us better people. Make us candidates for heaven. He cannot be an ambassador and going to hell. I don't know, Sister Sonia or Sister Lucy, to remember. But the loose, so let the moderator continue. I don't know who's the moderator. Ah, okay. But the loose, or is it the... Uh, let's thank God for this day. Thank you, sir, for your message. And it's awakening. It's an awakening message again. We are being warned every day. We are hearing this message every day. It's, uh, it's, it's really breaking. It's breaking because are we really walking in the way that God wants us to walk? Or are we just saying we are, we are in holiness and just 
cheating ourselves because our character, our hearts are still very far from God. Mm -hmm. So I thank the God who has given us this word. We should not be lied by anything that Christians, because we are Christians, we are going to heaven. I read a book which say Christians are in hell too. So we have to be very careful what we are doing. Let's just ask, let's pray for the man of God. God to empower him more and more and God to bless him and God to continue leading him.